Hello everyone. Another video. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been working, well, I'm kind of working on my bathroom, but I've been busy uh, teaching pottery, but that's, I'm on a two-week break now, so and I have a show coming up May 7th. Um, it's the Clay Alliance Spring Pottery Fair in Cincinnati. It's up in um, the Walnut Hills area. I don't know the name. I shouldn't know the name of the street, but I don't. Um, but anyway, so I got a, I got a kiln loading. So I loaded my kiln, and I was short a few pieces. And um, I thought I got to, I got to quick paint a few pieces to fill the kiln because you don't want to fire a kiln. Well, I, I don't like to fire a kiln unless it's full. Um, it does, you know, it promotes even heating, which is good for it. And um, well, you know, you don't want to waste electricity either. So. Anyway, so I'm going to paint this bowl, and I thought I'd jump on here and do a, do another video. Um, I, when I'm done with this, um, well, when I'm done here today, I'm going to paint my bathroom because i got to get it done. Right now, it's just a vacant bathroom with just a toilet. <laughs> That's all that's sitting in there. <laughs> it's been a slow process, waiting on plumbers and all sorts of stuff. But you know how that goes if you've ever renovated anything and tried to do it yourself. So we're trying to do it ourselves and save money, but um, it's been a trying thing. Um, anyway, so, but when I'm done painting these, and I'm done painting my bathroom, I'm going to start making stuff again. So I'm going to do um, some hand building. And uh, some of you have, have asked for, um, you know, I do this flower. This, um, I use the dark clay. I'm hoping to get the Kentucky Mudworks uh, Brown Bear and make some of those purse planters. And um, some people have asked me how I make those. So that's going to be my next project. And, um, oh, and I, well, I do need to make some more red birds, but I've shown you a video on that already. And if there's anything else, you know, just let me know. But, um, but I am going to do a one on the purse planters because it's spring. It's, uh, I can't believe it's already April 2nd. But, um, but yeah, they're fun to put, to put plants in. And I don't... I don't put a hole in the bottom of mine because I feel like, um, you know, if I'm sitting on a table, I don't want them draining on the table. And because they're oval shaped, you can't get some, a saucer that really goes underneath it, but I guess I could make it. But I just don't, I don't like that. So what I do is um, I fill the bottom half with sand or pebbles or something. Um, and then I put my plant down inside. And he, sometimes I even put my plant in a Ziploc bag and put that down. So but anyway, but we're not talking about that video. We'll, we'll talk about that in the planter video. But anyway, so let me lay you down. I got a big bowl here I'm going to paint. <laughs> so, and you can see the little birdies flying around outside. They're all, I'm, I'm feeding the birds and um, usually the squirrels are out there. We get to fight them off too. But, uh, but I fed the squirrels. They, I have peanuts for them, but... They ate all their peanuts. I think they're hiding them or something because let me move this back a little bit. My my little stand here I bought for uh, my video. It's not working out as well as I thought it would. So okay, so I'm gonna stand this down a little bit real quick. And what I do is I've got these uh, diamond core pads and they're foam, and I wet them down so they're wet, and then I just. You don't want, um, I mean, even though I smooth this down when I, when I throw it, um, it's still, you just feel, I, I throw with grog in my clay, so I don't want that feeling of, uh, the grog in there. So, there we go. I won't sand the whole, I'll wait to sand the bottom down. Uh, I did, I did, it's pretty smooth, but I can sand it down more when I, um, after I fire it. I don't want to take up a whole video of sanding. Let's see here. I always sign my name by hand. I threw this um, at the rec center where I teach, and I really need to get a stamp to take with me there because I usually write my name with a pencil um, in, in the pots I throw there. It's not really, I don't know, it doesn't look very, very professional, but I'm not really that professional anyway. <laughs> but 
but it does look nicer when you get a stamp. Um, I'm trying to think who made it was a company on Etsy that made my stamp I use here at home. See, I have a little. Um, I don't know if you can see that there. Put it in front of my yellow. It says Lisa. That's a. Um, I can't remember her name. She's on Etsy. If you just Google um, acrylic stamps on Etsy, you'll probably find her. Um, the big, the big stamp I have, I had made a while back of Cincinnati. I did that at Clay. I think it was Clay Four Stamps. But anyway, um, okay. So let's see here. I've got my. I'm using. Um, these are mostly all Amico uh, underglazes, velvets. Um, a few of them are speedball because I couldn't find Amico, but the speedballs have a more of a tendency to stick to the kiln shelf. So I don't know. They, I think they have a little more flux in them. They're nice underglazes, but, um, but yeah, they tend to stick a little bit. So let's see here. Um, I think I'm going to do a. For the center, this is going to be a weird flower. I used to do some plates like this, and they're all, and the petals are each a different color. I couldn't decide what, um, what kind of flower to do. And then, you know, you always have those people who say, oh, well, the blue doesn't match my kitchen, or the red doesn't match my kitchen, or, you know, whatever. So I thought, I'll have a flower with a petal of each color. And then it'll match everybody's kitchen, right? So I'm not gonna. I'll come back and I'll come back and touch that up a little bit. Um, but let's do. Um, we'll start out with. Let's see here. Can you see my underglazes? I've got them. Um, I've got little. I've got lids with colors in there. I mix up. And. Um, Let's see, let me move a little bit closer to the camera. And then here's my underglazes. These are all um, just, in a, just in a bead box that I, that I bought. And um, let's see, I hope you can see this well enough. Um, and then I just leave them in here. And then sometimes when I'm done, if I'm going to be gone or, you know, not use them for like, you know, a couple weeks, I give them a little spray, mist with water, and uh, that keeps them moist enough. So, okay. Um, I think I'm going to start out because I might do two of these blue leaves. Some of these um, glazes come right out of the jar, but a lot of them I hand, I hand mix. So I, you know, like this one here. This one here is a little black and um, some, I think it's uh, royal blue, probably, and a little bit of white. And, so I can't tell exactly what colors they are. Um, there we go. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm so excited for spring here. I'm really do not want to see the snow anymore, although, I don't know, I think they've got some snow in the forecast for one day this coming week. It's like it's 70 one day and 30 the next. Um, let's see, so I don't want um, a flat color, so I'm going to add a little bit of this turquoise, and this one is right out of the jar. Well, yeah, sometimes I add a little bit of white to it. I've had, um, no, sometimes it fires darker than what I like. Um, so I'm just going to add some white in here. A little more blue. There you go. You can kind of see. See, what I'm trying to do is add dimension. I don't want it to be, um, you know, one one flat color. When you look at it, I want you to see 
different colors in there. There we go. Whoops. Put my brush in the wrong color. Not that that would really matter. Hopefully you can even get under glazes where you are. I've had a really hard time um, even getting under glazes in my classroom where I teach. They've been all asking me, you know, for different colors, and um, nobody has anything. Okay, let's see. I think I'll do purple. I'm going to rinse out this brush a little bit. And I've got a nice violet. I think this one's just purple. And then I have a violet here next to it. You can kind of see the lighter color. Um, I think I'll put it ne next to it. I'm trying to save room for some words. I um, bought some Plum Island transfers. And they had some words, and I um, thought I'd try putting some transfers on here. Usually, I just write the words. It's you know not a big, not a big deal. To write them, but I was going to do a video yesterday, and um, I ended up picking up my mom to uh, take her to lunch, and um, she, my mother lived at a nursing home. She has dementia. I pick her up, and she's got slippers on. She's got her Christmas, Christmas leggings on. She's got her 4th of July t-shirt on. Let's see. Oh, Lord. She, I tried to tell her that her slippers were not shoes. But, uh, no. She didn't want to listen to me. So I said, well, I guess we're going to the restaurant in your slippers. In your uh, Christmas pants. In your 4th of July t-shirt. And who cares what anybody thinks, right? I'm sure everybody's got uh, oh, parents who's got issues. <laughs> I've already apologized to my son. I said, if I get like that, I'm just going to apologize right now. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then, of course, she called me after I dropped her off an hour later, a couple hours. I guess it was a couple hours later. Didn't even remember we'd been there. It was That's that's the sad part. They don't have any memories. Very, very sad. Okay, let's see here. Let's. So I try to make sure that I've got three layers. I mean, I, I, you know, I pile the layers on, so I'm not really counting layers. But, um... But I don't want it too thick. Um, but I don't want it. I don't want it too thin either. Because if it's thin, it, they can burn out. The greens like to turn brown. The reds like to turn brown. Um, oranges, the orange, the yellow, um, and the blues are pretty true. Um, I've had the purple turn blue, fire blue. But um, you know, just it's hard to it's hard to say. Uh, you know, because you know, when you're mixing your own colors, you really don't, you know, you've got that pigment in there, and you know, sometimes it's hard to to know what pigment is stronger than another pigment. Because um, I think when I, you know, I added blue to my avocado green because I wanted it a little bit darker, 
but, but wow, when I fired it, um, it turned out um, like a teal, which I, I did not, I did not want. I was not looking for the teal. I wanted an avocado green, but the blue was evidently a stronger pigment than what's in the green. So I just added yellow to it and it'll be interesting to see how that fires. I have a kiln going at the school. Actually, I run the whole program at, uh, at the, uh, it's called the um, Dunham Recreation Center. I actually run the program there. There's, I, I am in charge of the classes and loading the kilns, unloading the kilns, buying the glazes, mixing the glazes. So we have a two week hiatus right now. Classes ended yesterday and um, I'm going to put a little orange on here. I know this orange is probably stronger than the red. So I'm going to go back over the top with some red. Um, yeah, so we've got a couple, three weeks off until after Easter. And uh, I'm going to go back in next week and try to do some cleaning. They don't, they're not cleaning, isn't there? Uh, well, they don't do, let's just say they don't do the best job cleaning the room. And I want to get as much clay dust off the floor as possible. Um, it's better than it was. The room used to... Um, have carpet in it, if you can believe that. And when I first started pottery, no one, you know, no one told me how toxic clay dust is and glazed dust, and um, so we had the carpet taken out of that room. So if you're saying it's very important that your sponge is wet or your bowl is wet, you don't want to, you don't want to breathe that in. Let's see, what color should I do now? I don't know if I want to do a bright orange. I have a, I have this pumpkiny orange. Maybe I'll do that. I mix up this color strictly for these pumpkins that I do. Isn't that pretty? I love that orange. It's a really um, Tuscany orange. I like that. I think I can put a little bit. Of I like to add a little bit of white, just kind of brightens it up. And let's see here. Um, we've got blues, purples, reds. I don't know if I want to do a yellow because um, I've got yellow in the center. I think I guess I can do a turquoise. And I'm going to have probably a couple green leaves. So, hmm. You know what? Maybe I'll do a lime green. I can do a lime. Oh, I know it. I'll just add a blue. I'll add another blue. I'll, I'll add a turquoise blue. I just got a little orange in it now, but that's all right. I'll put one over here. I'm trying to kind of keep an eye on where I'm putting stuff to balance it out. Not leaving my, myself much room up top for the words I want to add. I hope. Well, I got a little more orange on there than what I want. So this is on Bisqueware. Um, this is a B Mix Five with Grog. Um, I always I always get um, the B Mix Five with the grog because um, I do a lot of hand building too, so I want to be able to use it for hand building and for wheel throwing for both. So you see me in a little white here. If you add a little white um, and then put your color over the top, it kind of helps to brighten it up. And I've done that on. Um, uh, if you're using like a dark clay, I've done that on the dark clay too.
you can put the white down first, let it dry, and then add your color. And then your underglazes, uh, they really pop if you're putting it, you know, the white down first, kind of blocks some of that dark clay color that sucks up your color. Okay, so I got room for one more. Hmm. Don't know. Maybe I'll do like a lime. Uh, I'll do a lime green. How about that? It's got a little bit of blue in it, but that's okay. And it's hard to say. I mean, when this fires, you know, the blue may be stronger than the lime green, and this may come out more blue, or it may come out more green. It's it's really hard to say. I mean, if you know, when you're mixing them like this, um, you know, you're really kind of taking a risk. I have a lot that I, you know, don't like because they come out different than you know how they are now, which really drives me crazy because you, know, you put all this work into it and then when it comes out it's like, ah. So I don't know if you can really see the colors. They're softer than what, you know, there you can probably see some of the subtleties of the, of the different colors I have mixed in here. Like this lime green, I'm going to add this. Uh, this is actually chartreuse, and this is right out of the bottle too. And I think I'm going to add a touch of touch of white to that. A little more lime green. Because, like I said, the, the greens do like to burn brown. So. I think I'm gonna put some of this bright yellow in the center. I'll rinse my brush, brush out a little better because now I'm gonna be a little bit pickier about the colors I'm putting in the center. I think I'm gonna put a touch of orange. It's amazing these um, colors. I don't know if your underglazes turn uh, black, but like I can see below here that the yellow is black on the bottom, so is the orange. And when I open this container, those smell so bad. Oh my gosh, it smells like the sewer when I open this case. And, um, it, it, you know, you don't have to worry about that. That's they, it all fires out. It's not a, not a big deal, um, and it you know it doesn't doesn't really bother me too much. But if it does bother you, you can um, just add a drop of, a couple of drops of bleach to it, and um, that gets rid of it. But who? It's like <laughs> I don't know what's in that. Is it sulfur they put in there? I guess. Um, not always never very good with chemistry, but um, that's what it smells like, really. I guess is sulfur. So I think I'm gonna put. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I should do. You know, I might. I don't think I am gonna do any leaves inside the bowl. I think I'm gonna put them on the outside of the bowl. To make sure that's dry on the inside before I put my put my fingers in there. And then what I do is I go around and I'll do each one and let it dry and then come back. I gotta I guess something on there. Here we go. Um, I got a little 
little clay booger. And this is damp, so I had it I had it sitting in my bucket, so it's not um it's not so it's wet, so it's not um throwing dust off. You guys can't see, can you? This bowl is so big, it's hard to keep in the camera. I don't know if you can tell how big this thing is, but... I just don't want to get my hands on the, um, on the inside. The inside of the flower is still wet. And so there's some yellows in here. Which is fun. There's a little bit of uh, yellow on my brush, and in fact, I'll put a little, a little more on there. Not quite that much, Lisa. A little too much. So my show coming up is. Um, I'm going to actually, um, I don't know, I, I, I've, I've talked about it before, but I renovated an old horse trailer. And um, so this will be like the third time that I'm going to use the horse trailer to sell my pottery out of. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm a little nervous about parking it. <laughs> Hopefully uh, I don't run anybody over. But yeah, so I took the inside of the horse trailer and I redid the floor, um, stained the floors dark, and uh, I painted the inside, the outside. Um, I put some racks in there, and so it's like a little pottery storefront. It's so cute, turned out so cute. I have videos on that too, um, of me renovating it. All right, and so then on the bottom here, I'm going to do, let's see. I always like to put something on the bottom also. So if people turn it over, you know, you've decorated all sides of it. And I've got a foot on here. It wouldn't have really, it wouldn't stick. I mean, it might stick to the kiln wash on the shelf a little bit, but, um, you can just sand that off if it sticks, but this has a foot on it, so this won't stick. Um, let's see, and then, um, uh, did a couple short videos. Um, YouTube wants you to do these shorts, short videos, they call them shorts, but I have not, I have not figured out how to do them yet. I made a couple short videos, but <laughs> I can't figure out how to uh, load them. So I just put them on my regular feed on YouTube. Eventually I'll figure it out. Figure out a little bit here and there. Alrighty, I put a put the center in there. Hope you can see this. There we go. I gotta try to make these videos shorter. I told my son how long my videos are, and he's like, "Mom, those are too long. You're gonna bore people." People aren't going to watch them if they're too long. I said, well, I can only paint so fast. Let's see. I got a little, a little 
put her in there. There we go. Um, I don't know if you ever get those crusties out of your cl uh, glazes. They're called oolites. And they're just um, a buildup of the minerals that are in your glazes. And they will not fire out. So if you have any little tiny bowls that come out of your glaze or chunks, don't leave them in there. You know, once everything's dry, like I take my, my fingers and I just smooth down any, any bumps because they will, those bumps will stick through the clear and um, you have a, like a rough spot. Unless I had some green on my finger or something. There we go. Okay. Um, now let's see. So, so I've got some words here. Let's see. So here is. So you can buy this transfer paper with these words on it. And then you can just cut out the words you want. And I've got these from, um, here's the company. I know this could be backwards, but it's Plum Island Transfers. My phone, um, yeah, when you're, when you're filming on your phone, it, it films the words backwards. I don't know why. I don't think there's anything you can do about it, so. Okay, so I'm going to put some of these words on here. This one says love. There you go. <laughs> um, and what I'm going to do is just take a, a sponge and I'm going to wring out as much water as I can. I don't want it very damp at all because these, um, I've used these before and I'm not sure why, but they have uh, smeared on me a little bit. So... I'm going to make sure it's kind of level here. Get up there. There you go. Okay. Once you get them... Oh, shoot. <laughs> I was just going to say, once you get them wet, they stick. I think I'm going to put that over here. And actually, whoops. Make sure the dark side goes down. There you go. I'll stay on there. There you go. See how that's on there? So I'm just going to tap that with my with my sponge. I'm going to get a little more water on my sponge, but yeah, you don't want to... That's it. You don't want any more on there. And I'm just going to leave that on there while I put the other ones on. Um, you kind of want your hands dry when you pick them up, too. This one says... Forgive. I should send this bowl to a couple, a couple people in the in the world, huh? Learn how to forgive, forgive and forget. But we won't talk about that because there's some terrible things going on in the world. This war, this poor Ukrainian people. Oh, it just uh, breaks my heart. But I believe they're they're bringing some to the United States. And that's it's pretty exciting. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna wait till I'm gonna do some more here. I got um, inspire. And I'm not I'm not really trying to um, I don't know space these out perfectly or anything. I mean, it's a whimsical bowl. It's not like, um, I don't want it to look like you bought it from Walmart or something. I want it to look, I want it to look homemade, handmade, homemade. Uh, let's see here. I've got, uh, truth. There we go. Truth. Let's see. How about play? I have dream. That's a good one. I'll, I'll put truth. How about dream? Dream's a good one. 
And I like the font. They have um, the sheets come in all different fonts. Let's see here. So we'll put this one right here. So I'm just going to line this up. And then I'm going to get my sponge just, just slightly wet, not too wet. And just hold it down like that. See, and then it sticks. And I'm going to dab it. And then once you get it wet, it activates that underglaze that's on there. Oh, here's a long one. Imagine. I don't know if I got room. Maybe I'll put, hmm, that kind of is off. I guess I could put one, yeah, I could put that right there. There we go. And then maybe one more. Um, what's this say? Hope, joy, those are, that's a good one. Both of those are good, but I think I'll pick, um, I think I'll pick hope. I'll put the hope right up here. There we go. Okay. So now, let's see, what was the first one? The first one was love. So I'm going to peel that off. And let's see if it... Before you peel the whole thing off, make sure you just do it. Nah, that didn't, it didn't come off. It did not adhere so I'm gonna get it wet a little bit more and then what you can do is um, I'm looking, looking for kind of a rubber rib I think I'm just use the back of my up uh, the problem is if you if you rub them they um, they can smear so you gotta be see it's smearing hmm. so I'm gonna go back with a little bit more water On each one, I'm just going to gently dab the water on there to activate that. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, do my black underliner like I always do. And then I'll pull them off. Because I've, I've put these on before and I know that if I, if I rub them, they will smear. I, I don't know if Plum Island Transfers uses... Um, a different underglaze and other transfer companies. I've really not had a problems with um, with them smearing like that. But I do have a problem with, with these for some reason. Okay, so I've got my my favorite applicator tool design bottle, and this is a, a the yellow one. It's a number twenty, and like I put my name on it. Lisa, the smile face. <laughs> That's in case I take it to class with me and other people have them. And I'm going to push this back out of the way a little bit. And we know whose is who. Let me see if this uh, is working. Ah, yeah, it's working. Oh, well, it's stuck to my finger, so. So can you see at the top here? That one came off. It's stuck to my finger, so that is working there. So that's good. But I'm going to leave these other ones on here until I'm ready for them. Get some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, so... I'm going to turn this over and do the bottom first and make sure my make sure it's not gummed up this is probably my favorite part it really just um, you know makes the color pop every, every once in a while I always think about not doing this 
because I see some people, um, their, their designs are so much softer, which I like, but I don't know. I, I hope this turns out pretty in the kiln. So I'm going to load the kiln today and, um, Once I load the kiln today, so I should have a kiln opening. Today is Saturday. So I should have a kiln opening. Let's see, Sunday, so Monday. If you're interested to see how these look, once they're, I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. There we go. Um, if you're interested to see how these look after they're fired, because I'm going to put a clear on here. And I'll load them in the kiln and they'll be ready to see on Monday. Let's see, today is the 2nd, so that's the 4th, April 4th. So I'll post the video either April 4th or April 5th, hopefully April 4th. Oh, see, I was trying to be careful not to. The hardest part when you're doing something like this is not um, getting your hand in the, putting your hand in the stuff you just painted and smearing it like I just did. And it's not, there we go. It's not a huge deal, you know. But I don't want to smear the black. But keep your hands off there, Lisa. My big hands. I got my dad's hands. Look at the size of my hands. My mother thought, well, she's got big hands. She can play the piano. It tried for years to teach me the piano. <laughs> I even have a piano, but I can play the piano, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so there's the bottom. And there's the leaves, the little whimsical leaves around the outside. I'm going to try to touch this without. There you go. So, okay, let's do the inside. Let's see what these look like. Yeah, not too bad. It, it, that word there smeared just a little bit. It's just not a crisp word. Just not a that one there's a little bit more crisp. I'll get these off of here and I'll show you what they look like. And Chris, oh my son just went outside looking for Sophie girl my. Brittany, and she's at the back door here. Sophie, you're going to have to go around the front. Like she can understand me. Well, I'm not letting her in. I'm not letting her in. Okay, so I think I got them all. So, okay, so here you go. I'll show you real quick. So there's the words. And like I said, I know they're backwards, but you can see the word love. Forgive, inspire, imagine, hope. Okay, so let's do this part before before I bore you completely. Because this is this is the fun part, right? When it all comes to life. Chris? No, he's in the front. Chris. Sophie's at the back. <laughs> That's my son Christopher. He lives with us. He's um, 37 years old, a special needs child. So he'll live with us forever. 
He's my buddy. He's my shadow. We go everywhere together. He help, He goes to the shows with me, the art shows, and helps me set up. And if I'm going in the wrong direction, <laughs> he tells me I'm going the wrong way. Oh my goodness, his memory is unbelievable. I always call him my gift from God. Because I don't know what I would do without him. Let's see, okay. Now, I told him I was making a video, and he's in there teasing his dad. I don't know if you can hear him in there carrying on, but... Oh, he let the dog in. <laughs> there we go. I tell him. Before I make a video, I tell him. I'm making a video. Don't, uh, don't start screaming or carrying on or yelling. Let the dog. Well, we have three dogs. And our one dog, who I always talk about, Ernie. He's the one who's, I guess he's 15 or 16 now. He just had a birthday. I guess when you lose track, that's pretty bad. Not a very good fur mama. I do spoil them, though. They sleep in bed with me at night. But, uh, yeah, he... He pees on the floor. It's like, I don't know if he forgets where he's at. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, they're like... They're yelling at him sometimes, yeah. So, this hasn't been fired. Um, I'm putting this on right over top of what I just glazed. And so what I'm doing is make sure you're pulling it away from you. Don't, don't pull your, don't push your applicator bottle because it's gonna, the tip's going to fill up with the glaze. So you want to go away, or actually you want to pull towards yourself, but away from the tip of the bottle. And if it gets clogged up, I just squeeze it out on a piece of um, paper towel. But, um, but yeah, so I fill my bottles with um, Amigo Velvet, um, the LUG, that is a little bit stronger pigment, or they're jet black, if I can find it. So Amigo Velvet Underglaze, jet black. Um... That's my favorite. And then, so you want to water it down just a little bit before you put it in here. And if you have any chunks, if it, if it comes out and it's got any chunks, make sure you sieve it. Get yourself, they've got these nice little um, clay, uh, clay scapes. I think it's clay scapes pottery. It has these little sieves. You can put it right in the top of your, um, a cup or something, and sieve your underglaze right through there. If you have chunks in your underglaze, um, oh gosh, it's 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 you'll be constantly cleaning out your applicator bottle. You might be you might even be saying bad words to yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, so just a little bit of water, like I always say. If you hold it upside down and it drips, you've added too much water. You don't want it to drip out. Um, you'll, you'll find the less water you add, the thicker or the thinner, the less water you add, the thinner your line will be. Um, the more water, it's you know, your line spreads out a little bit. And of course, um, I think there's one tip that's smaller than this. But, um, but yeah, so... Yeah, so the water, you know, it absorbs into the clay, and um, it, it'll it spread out a little bit. So that's it. That is, so what do you think? You've got the sides, the, the bottom, and then there's the bowl. And you can see the words on there. They're pretty crisp. But see how they don't, you know, if you don't go over them with... Um, you can use a little wooden roll, roller. Can't say that roller. Um, looks like that one didn't go. Yeah, that's 
I know it's hard to read them backwards. Um, but they didn't transfer I, I, 100%. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, yeah, see, they, they didn't transfer 100%. And if you go over them, they kind of tend to smear. So I can't say I'm 100% happy with um, with these. But it could be because this. It could be because my bisque wear is a little um, rough. Maybe I should have sanded it down more. Um, also, you know, a lot of transfers, they do probably work a little bit better on the greenware. But, um, so I could have put them on the greenware first. But I don't know, I've always done them this way because if I put all this work into it and then it cracks in the bisque wear firing... And then I've just wasted it an hour, you know, glazing it and everything and all the glaze and the product and everything. So I don't know. I've never really, um, never really done it all in greenware before. I did some tests. Remember I did some test pieces, um, a while back, but, um, there we go. You can see my backyard and the grass is turning greener. Let me raise this up a little bit. I don't know why this arm is the goofiest. I should have got a different camera holder. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I should have a kiln opening um, with this in it. I'm going to clear glaze this. Oh, that's right. I wanted to show you how to... Do I got time? I got time. I'm going to show you how to clear glaze this. Because everybody asks me, do you clear glaze it right away? And they always say, mine smears. Um, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I do this. Okay, it's not a trick. Let me lower this back down. So, now I make my own, um, but I did buy, I did find some Mako stoneware. As long as it's zinc-free, that's what you want. Now, I add a little bit of water to this. I didn't want it quite so thick. I'm going to make sure there's no dust on here. I'm going to make sure there's no chunks of underglaze on here. Oh, oh I got keep getting green all over okay so I'll just do the so this is how I do it now this is just you know it just dried I just got done actually actually I'm gonna do the outside first because I since I did the black liner on this first I'll do this first I'm just going to put a light coat on the bottom. And what's really important when you're doing glazing is your brush. This is a Mako number no. 8 fan brush. This is her thick. See how thick that is? You want to get a lot of glaze on it because you do not want to rub. You want to go over it and then leave it go. Don't, you know, like see, I can right there because there's nothing. But here over the flower, over the leaves, boom, I'm done. So over here, I'm going to get one coat on here. And then we'll let that first coat dry before I touch it again. Because you just want to go over here like one time. You know, if you've got too much water in your in your clear glaze, that would probably smear it too. But I don't know. I don't have a problem. See, I'm just going over it. I got a little bit there, but you see it. I'm trying to hold it in a weird angle. Okay, so so I've got one coat on the outside. I'm going to flip that over very carefully. <laughs> More carefully than that. <laughs> Let's see, did I do any damage? Oh, I did a little bit there. That's okay. I can fix it. <laughs> carefully, Lisa. I said carefully. 
So don't don't do as I do, just do as I say. <laughs> oh Lord. Let me get that off of that. I think that's a chunk of um get those underglazes out of the way. It's hard when you're trying to video because you're look at that. That darn darn thing is sticking like glue onto there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more green. There we go. There we go. Okay. I think I fixed it. So I'll let that dry and I'll come back and go over that again. But let's try this again. Very carefully turn it over. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to do the inside. I'm going to be very, I'm, I'm doing this very gently, but I'm not going over anything more than twice. Can you see that? Especially those words. Like I'm putting a lot of glaze on this brush. I'm, I'm basically kind of gooping it on. So I will put one more coat on over this and that's it. But I just want to get this first coat on and then I'll let this coat dry. After this coat's dry, only, only when this coat is 100% dry will I put the second coat on. So there you are. So you can see, kind of see through it. But that's the first coat. So when that's dry, and, and really by the time I do the inside, I can usually flip this over and do the outside, then go back and do the inside. Um, but I won't take up a lot of your time. So when this is 100% dry, I'll put the second coat on and it's gonna go in the kiln in about 15 minutes. So, all right, now I'm really done. But I just wanted to show you how I, I clear glaze these. And like I said, um, here is one of these brushes. I have, I have several, I have about three or four of them. I don't know if you can see the words are kind of worn off, but it's a Mako number eight. But see how thick that is? It's a really thick one. And because it's thick, it holds a lot of glaze. So you can get a lot of glaze on there and just gently brush it over. Um, you know, your brushes make all the difference in the world. I see so many people glazing and, um, you know, these kind of brushes are fine if you're just putting on some color. Um, but I, you know, but when you're using commercial glazes, the regular glazes, even like, um, you know, like these, um, the regular ones, you don't want to be like going like this back and forth. Um, there's chemicals and minerals in there that you don't want to lose when you're glazing. I mean, they say, oh, my glaze didn't turn out right. Um, you know, these are the best. You just load it up and just gently put that on there. And then your second coat goes this way. The first coat goes this way, second coat goes this way, and the third coat goes this way. And then you don't have the blotching. But, um, you know, like I said, these brushes are good for color, but when you're glazing, putting a lot of glaze on, these thick fan brushes are the best. All right, I think that's it. And like I said, I have a um, kiln opening on March, I mean, geez, March, April 5th, I should have one. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Just put them in the comments below. Um, I think I've almost hit 2,000 subscribers. So if you're interested in watching more videos, please um, hit subscribe. Um, I don't put out a lot of videos, so I don't, you know, won't bug you or anything. <laughs> and, um, and like I said, leave something in the comments. And I, I try to answer everybody back. If I've missed you, just re-comment. Because, um, you know, sometimes they get lost. But, um, but anyway... That's everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much.